Hello, Fun Nation. My name is James, checking in with team number 4967, that one team from the 1st in Michigan District here at the Indiana Robotics Invitational. This sleek robot with lots of 3D printing, very effective design, has a lot to dive into. Here we have Caden, Braden, Hagen, and Maddox here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, Caden, why don't you start us off with a little bit of a note path overview here for your robot. Yeah, so just diving right into it. No, can you run the intake? All right. So when a note gets in um, our intake, we have one brake sit seated right at the back just to um, stop the note right where we want it. Apply it wheel, stop spinning once it detects that. And then we have shooter wheels at the top. Um, and then again, following that note path for amp, what we'll do is we'll lean our speaker back and then fire it really light. And that has worked great for just firing into the amp. Um, and then it's just a little bit of an overview of the note path of our robot. What kind of iteration did you guys have to go through to get to that shooter design where you could do both the, the speaker and the amp in the same design? Yeah, so we were kind of just looking at the heights for how big we wanted it to be. So we wanted to be able to, um, just from when we're standing right up against the amp to have our shooter be able to sit right below where the amp is. So with that design in mind, we figured out almost exactly where there's space available on our robot, where we want our pivot point to be. And from there, we were able to figure out how large we wanted that shooter. And Braden, do you want to run us through a little bit more of some of the features on this robot? I know you have a climber as well as some other cool things to talk about. Yeah, so we have these climbers, which are just ones you can buy. We were prototyping multiple different designs. We ended up, all our prototypes showed that this type works the best. We were like, we're getting low on time. Let's just buy something that we know works and throw it on. And it's survived a lot. We can climb really, really fast. We have these braces for it. We actually didn't have those braces before and stuff got wobbly. So we added these on uh, our shooter. So a shooter has these three pin rising suns. We call them rising suns. They're double helix gears, which help align themselves automatically. And it worked very well. This was first idea we had to move it up and down or the first one we really used. And it works very well. Uh, haven't had to replace any of the three print parts yet. That's very impressive. So looking at the robot, I'm curious, what is this this uh, this tension across the climber? So this, this string right here is for protecting the climbers from a note. If a note lands like this, we can spin and shoot it off the edge. We really have never needed to use it, but it's always a safety precaution. Very cool. Tegan, do you want to dive a little bit more into the swerve modules on your team as well as some of the 3D printing that you guys use in addition to your Ryzen Suns? So the swerve modules you used are MK4i swerve modules. We run NEOs, so it's running the module. We don't have any customization to it other than our covers, which is covering the um, spark maxes and other electrical stuff like the can. The swerve modules were integrated into the frame in a way that we can replace a single swerve module quickly. So there's four bolts holding them in and we drop, pull those out and can pick it up out of the frame. Other 3D printing we've done is we have gears running our intake. So there's gears there and here. So yeah. Braden told us that your 3D printing was very durable. You haven't had to replace any 3D printed parts all season. What did your team do to make that so successful? For 3D printing, we've tuned our 3D printer and spent quite a bit of time actually tuning it. And these are actually PLA, so they're a softer material, which actually works well because it kind of wears in and it allows itself to move smoother. And then these, I believe, are PL, P, or PETG. These are PETG gears, which are more durable and 
they worked very well. We have a decent infill. We use plenty of walls to make sure everything's thick and doesn't snap. And that's the basic basics of it. Very innovative, Brayden. Thanks for sharing. Maddox, why don't you finish it off with, uh, tell us a little bit more about the software on that one team. What makes this robot tick? So this year, our software team actually doubled. So we wanted to dream big and go large. So to this year, we actually decided to create our own path creation system from scratch. So all our autons are integrated from a path planning system where you tell it which nodes you want to grab and where you're starting, and it automatically generates the paths themselves. We also integrated programs for avoiding the pull so that the trusses of the stage are automatically avoided using a mathematical vector equation in the path planning. But additionally, we also use April tags, like many teams, to detect the stage so that we can shoot from anywhere on the field if we stand still. We've had success from pretty much anywhere inside of our community zone. And on, we can shoot under the stage, which took a lot of software to do, but a lot of avoidance programming and making sure that we can automatically fire and automatically do our autons without having to get some driver awareness, you know? So I see if you have a limelight pointing down here, what does that do? So this one is actually a limelight that has photon vision loaded onto it. So it's detecting notes so that if a note is detected on this camera, the robot will automatically angle itself so that the note is in the center of the robot. So it's a much easier pickup. Awesome, that, that must help your drivers out a lot and yeah. during, during the match. So very cool. Well, that one team, thank you so much for sharing all the innovative things you guys have done in your robot this season. Can't wait to see future robots and keep on cheering you guys here in the FIM district. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. This is James with Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.